Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, or possibly good evening, boys and girls, as this is a children's story reading, which is just long enough for a bedtime story before you go to bed. Now, when mummy or daddy says go to bed, that's what you do. Okay, so you've been allowed, you've been allowed to have a 15 to 20 minute story, which I'm now using a lot of the time off by explaining all, all the round rules to you, but that means that I can get more you know, mileage out of the actual readings of time, because I'll do this, I'll, I'll repeat this bit over and over again at the beginning of every clip. So, um, without further ado, we'll go to the next thrilling instalment of Jimmy and the Pink Diamond. up now, said Anton, who was brushing the crumbs from the table. When Jimmy told Grandfather about how they carried him back to the balcony by his arms, Genya broke in again. We go in Jimmy's house and we find great big eating. Anton opened the refrigerator. We take Jimmy and food in back to bridge. You know whole story now. Then Grandfather raised one wing. His face was suddenly serious. Boys, We've got to talk about tomorrow, about what might happen. I better begin at the beginning. Remember last year when Katya and I were here for a little vacation? I ran into an old acquaintance who was who has lived here for a long time. He's a blue parrot. He said he could help me sell the diamond. The young ravens were very quiet and looked at each other nervously. Grandfather calmly continued, You know, we have to sell it, and you also know we can't sell it to just anyone. Who would believe that we hadn't stolen it? A human would just take it away from us. Anyway, we met this acquaintance of mine in a little cafe on the Prince Street Canal one afternoon. He was drinking chocolate milk with his friends. We knew each other from our university days. He calls himself Jan Derover now, but his real name is Ivan Raskolnikov. I believe he's become the leader of an organization. At least that's what he calls it. Their game is buying and selling other people's property. They'll sell anything that's small and valuable. We must be very careful with him. But I'm afraid he's the only one who can help us sell the diamond. He promised that he would help if we came to Amsterdam. Grandfather sighed and rested his head in his wings. His grandsons noticed that he looked rather old and frail. He has a human being for a partner and that is already weird enough for me. I met him too continued Boris with a frown. Grandfather, asked Anton, but how can we trust him? He is a hooligan, maybe like gangster. That is a difficult question, my boy. He does have connections in the diamond trade, and we do not. Honestly, Anton, I don't dare do it alone. When we were studying at the University of Moscow, the Jan was already a bad bird. In fact, he was the worst sort of cheat, but he had a brilliant mind. He studied business and science. I studied too. After he finished his studies, a sailor captured him. Then a year later, Jan told everybody that the man was great sea captain. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. Anyway, the sailor man was tyrant. He kept Jan in a cage. He would starve Jan and beat him, sometimes for days and days, when he didn't do well in his language lessons. He would often poke him with the knife, just for fun. This wicked spell fellow taught him English, Dutch and Russian. He speaks all three languages perfectly. It probably drove poor Jan mad. After a few years, Jan found a way to escape, and he came to live in Amsterdam. He's been living here for many years. Last year he was bragging to everybody that he could still go for days without eating or drinking, 
Of course, he was drinking chocolate milk at the time, and chocolate drives him as mad as a meat axe. I didn't believe everything he said. But I can tell you one thing. He has become tough and stony-hearted. He doesn't have real feelings anymore. Everything has become a cruel game to him. I have set up a meeting with him tomorrow in a little cafe called the Brown Horse. It is in the center of town. Anton had a feeling that their fine little plan was already doomed. He glanced at his grandfather and then stared out of the little window, silent and worried. Grandfather went on with his stories. You see, boys, Jan the parrot can talk to human beings. It isn't easy to do. Once, in ancient times, when the world was in harmony, everyone could understand each other. It didn't matter whether you were a Dutchman or a squirrel. There was only one single language. Animals were honored for their strengths and abilities, and humans could talk to them as well. After thousands of years, people started to live in groups. They lost the ability to speak to their own neighbors. Animals became workers for the humans, and they too lost the art of talking to anyone who was human. Soon, it became difficult for animals to speak to other animals. We still had our old language called Animish, but we had a strong accent, just like the humans we worked for. Get the point, Grandfather, said Anton. He'd heard it all before. Grandfather told it to them every year. Well, look at me, he went on. I speak our ancient language, Animish, with a slight Russian accent. Anton has a stronger accent, and Genia doesn't really care. Near grandfather, Genia speak very good. <laughs> so continued Genya, this parrot is thief, simple, we find men, tell him price of diamond, we make good price, men like deal, men buys diamond, everybody happy, we get money, we fly home. That's right, my boy, that's right, cried Boris. I couldn't have put it any better myself. Jimmy heard bits and pieces of the plan, but it made no sense to him. He was much too tired. He forced himself to keep his eyes open. When the ravens realized that he was asleep, they carefully covered him with the newspaper snippets so that he would stay cosy and warm. As Jimmy slept, they talked long into the night. None of them were sure of whether their plan would work, but they all knew one thing, somehow. They had to make it happen. Many animals were depending on them. Благодарю тебя за песенность города и